Sect could be 
Igreja faz bem, o Arthur Hitmuschek, such a question is that not the unhappy at all. Though they are the, uh, very bad, but still they are bad. So this is how the sects uh, and different sampradayas, they follow different forms of, uh, they, they, they follow different forms, they follow different forms. And uh, method of worship also quite, uh, it, uh, it differs quite often. Uh, to a large extent it differs, yes, but though you can find uh, a lot of common ground among many of them, so, in spite of such differences, they all uniformly subscribe to Omkara. So, Omkara has already united different sects and the paths of Hindu Dharma, a variety of them, into one single, into one single, uh, one single symbol of reality. So, the already Omkara has done. That has, has performed the miracle of bringing all of them under one umbrella. They are all called Hindus because they are all uniformly subscribed to one thing, if not more, but to one thing that is uh, very common to every one of these sects, and that is the sound Om. So, for the practicing Hindus, the sound Om has such an important significance. The devotees of Rama, the devotees of Krishna, they uniformly and equally revere the sound of Om. They may differ in other respects, but when it, but when it comes to the sound of Om, they all unite. So that is the glory of the sound of Om. Then, this sound of Om in uh, ancient times, maybe uh, even before Christ came onto the scene of the world, it has uh, traveled uh, to Middle East and other parts of the world, maybe through the Silk Route and all that. And then uh, it has come back to India in a slightly altered form. Uh, like, uh, for example, I give you uh, a small anecdote. Uh, there was a friend of mine who was uh, a Purohit, a practicing Purohit. Nowadays, the Purohits find uh, that they are in a great demand even outside the shores of Bharat. So they go to West, and of course they go to North America and find many Hindus living there, and they're still following their culture with a lot of enthusiasm. So they perform the rituals, and so they take the Purohits from here to those distant lands. And you can see a large number of Purohits traveling across the oceans and settling in those lands, distant lands helping the Hindu diaspora are to practice their religion heavily. So one, one such Purohit, who, who is very well known to me, uh, he was very dhoti and uttari uh, of the upper class and had a, a quite a sizable a tuft of hair on his head. So, uh, and a shaven head, but with a tuft of hair behind. Uh, so a very characteristic uh, appearance of a great priest. And so he went to London. And there where he stayed for a year or so uh, in helping the Hindus there perform different rituals. And then he is coming back to India. So, while coming back to India, I met him. I was also traveling when British Airways flight, so I met him on the day. But uh, at the first look, I did not recognize him because he was wearing a band and shirt now, not uh, the Thoti and Uttari anymore. And then, uh, his tuft of hair is gone. A lot of uh, hair cracking, cropping, or cropping, or whatever they call it. So hairstyle has changed. You have to really, really look for that small tuft of hair hidden in that uh, uh, new hairstyle. But, but in spite of all these changes, he is the same gentleman. He is not a new person. And uh, uh, with some difficulty, I could recognize him and said, Oh, I almost missed you. You are such and such. He said, yes, Swami, I am such and such. So, he is the same person, but in a different uh, outfit, in a different appearance. Similarly, this Omkara, it has uh, traveled across the Silk Route and went to uh, distant lands, and then it has returned in a changed attire back to Bharat. And this changed form is Amen. Amen is Omkara. You may not be able to recognize it like I tried to recognize my 
Rohit Pranya. So, only thing is, in the Hindu prayers, uniformly, the beginning of the utterance uh, is Om. Whereas, in the Christian prayers, invariably, Om appears at the end of the prayer as an Amen. In fact, you do not see any Christian prayer, any pastor or bishop or whatever, a religious guy, and he utters a prayer, he says the prayer, and immediately concludes the prayer by saying Amen. And whenever I hear this word Amen, I recognize Om there. Of course, a lot of uh, outfit change you can see, uh, but still, it is the same Om. And then, uh, so already, Om has uh, crossed uh, the, the parameters of India, Bharat, and also Hindu Dharma. It has permeated uh, into Christianity. And uh, uh, along with Om, I think even some of the spirit of Hindu Dharma has permeated into Christian practice. Uh, I remember uh, there was a, a, a conference of cardinals or bishops, whatever, in Lucknow. And it was presented over by the Pope's uh, personal secretary, uh, Pope's ambassador, a very important person in Vatican administration, was a gentleman. He came to Lucknow and presided over uh, this function. Uh, I don't remember the exact name of that uh, conference. It happened some three, four years back, and it was widely reported in the news also. And uh, in that conference, they have adopted a, a resolution in which they decided uh, to adopt uh, Satchidananda as an important description of God into Hindu, into Christian mysticism. So they have already adopted that. That was one of the resolutions. So not only Om has permeated Christian uh, mythology and mysticism, but also along with Om, the mission of Godhead, Godhead as Satchidananda means existence absolute, uh, awareness absolute, and the bliss. That is what God is. God is not a gentleman standing somewhere. God is a, a, a principle, a reality that pervades all. It is not separate from anything. It pervades all. It is a reality. It is the formless in every form. And uh, so what is that formless reality that we call God? That is Satchidananda. And so this is the very fundamental premise of Hindu Dharma. This is happily adopted into Christian mythology. It is already present in Christian mysticism, but now it has gone into the churchy operated at Christian mythology also. Anyway, so what I was trying to say, Om has crossed the boundaries of uh, uh, the religion, uh, the culture, and also the territorial boundaries of Bharat, and it has become a uh, kind of universal in being an uh, integral part of uh, every Christian prayer. And then, uh, uh, if you look at uh, the, the, travel, the movement of home across the globe, so there is a word called Amin, A-M-I-N, that is how they, they, they print it. The pronunciation is uh, probably Amin, that is how they pronounce Amin. This Amin, you find it in every prayer of Muslims. Uh, in every namaz, you will find Amin. And uh, of course, Sufism among uh, the Islamic cultures, uh, wherever there is Sufism, Sufism is very much a, a kin uh, to Vedanta, our Vedanta. And you have saints like Kabir Das, etc., uh, who, uh, who created a happy blend of uh, Islamic mysticism and Hindu Vedanta. So Kabir Das, uh, he, he is uh, uh, more uh, Hindu than any Hindu, though he seems to be a, a Muslim to begin with. So, uh, this is how the Omkara appears in Islam prayers as a mean, A-M-I-N. And uh, the philologists, they, they, they claim, or uh, they, they subscribe, that uh, the Omega of the Greek culture is indeed a, a, a image, or it is a symbol derived from 